Hello and welcome back to the MC Podcast. Uh, we're doing a little different episode today. We're doing a topical episode on uh, one of our products called Master Grays. I uh, hope you all checked out our last episode with Congressman Mike Bost. That was uh, a pleasure talking to him. And uh, in the couple weeks since we filmed that episode, a lot of those stimulus funds are already rolling out. Uh, so hopefully, hopefully you're getting some of uh, the funds and relief that you need, viewer. Um, talking about Master Grays with my friend Scott Harris here. I'm Andrew Crabtree, by the way. Uh, I can't remember if I introduced myself or not. I think you did. Well. For those that don't know, um, so we are in, what, like week four or five here in Illinois of a stay-home order, and Scott, I can tell you that uh, the first call that I make after after the stay-home is lifted is going to be to my barber because as you see me on if you're if you're listening on the audio you're doing yourself a favor because if you're watching this <laughs> on youtube i look like grizzly adams right now yeah. and i've been begging my wife to cut my hair and she will not i'm scared she's a little intimidated but really other than the podcast audience who's gonna see yeah that's true nobody else really care i mean nobody else in your household obviously cares and no people here don't care they're used to you being a little bit Hairy. I don't know how you look so well groomed. I literally had just gotten a haircut like the week before this happened. That's lucky like for no you. no joke. Like I got it on Saturday, and by the next Saturday is basically when most of this started. So good on you. Not me. I'm over here looking like a farm animal. Uh, speaking of farm animals, um, I don't eat Master Grays, but I knew I know some farm animals that do. Right. Um, what makes mass? So we're going to talk about Master Grays. Master Grays does not have a hybrid number or nomenclature like many of the other hybrids in our lineup. You know, MC5250 has a nomenclature. It is called that because of a reason. Master Grays does not have that. What, what makes Master Grays different? Is this a corn hybrid or what are we looking at? So Master Grays is a tillering. We call it a 60-day. We'll get into more of what, what that actually means here in a minute. But it's a tillering BMR corn. And so all that simply means is that it has one main stalk that comes up from the middle. And it then we'll have anywhere from five to eight. Um, I think we actually have a picture here that you can even point out. Yes. So you have one main stalk right, right there in the middle. And then you have some tillers that come up. Looks like that one has about five. Like I said, five or six. It it um, looks like, if you look at that picture on the right, you look at this isolated picture on the left, look at the picture on the right, it looks like one mess of of product out there in the field. It is a lot going on. Uh, from the stalk aspect, from the leaf aspect, um, it's let's just be very honest and get this out there because this is one of the like pushbacks I get sometimes, and I don't understand it. Is that it's not pretty. No. It, it is not a pretty plant. It's not like a... It is a mess of If forage. you get a good... If you get a really good germination and you get a really good situation, after it's up and it's growing, it can look pretty. But in its early stages, it is not uncommon to walk out and see a plant that's, you know, uh, two feet off the ground and then have another one six inches shorter than it and one six inches taller than the one beside it. And it's not uniform. It's just not what how it's... It's not how it's made. It's not its genetics. And it's, but eventually, it's going to all look pretty uniform at the end of the day. But for it's the most part... It's going to uniformly look like... Like a big mess of forage. Absolutely, <laughs> and it's it's a it's a what is it like? It would be an oxymoron where it's like it's it's a beautiful mess, I guess. Yeah, you know. Um, for so. the for the listeners listening on the audio version that are not watching and do not see the pictures behind us on YouTube, um, you can check those pictures out. We're gonna put some of those up on our Instagram. So if you go to uh, our Instagram feed, Master's Choice, uh, you can see some of those images. But you, you're looking at uh, two pictures here. One, like Scott was just describing, of the main. Uh, the main stock with these these tillers coming off, which is, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Scott, but that's some pretty good fiber digestibility there. Yeah, so that's the aspect of the, the with the BMR that the BMR brings. Um, one thing we don't have BMRs in our in our typical in our traditional lineup. One aspect about BMR that we agree that is great is the fiber digestibility. Um, BMR is just brown, it's a brown midrib. It's actually a genetic mutation um, that puts less lignin into the plant. And so you get a lot higher fiber digestibility. Um, we the, the the phrase that Lynn Crabtree always likes to use is it's rocket fuel. Um, it's a lot of energy um, out there. And then when you take just the fact that there's a bunch of it, um, and and it's rocket fuel, it's a good combination for sure. So so uh, the next thing I've got in my notes, and we've already started touching on this, is the benefits. 
Uh, we talked about the fiber digestibility. We talked about the mass of forage. Um, is not one of the benefits of this how quickly you can make some feed? Yeah, so like I said, we call it a 60-day tillering BMR. Um, what that technically means is that because we're going to take it basically at the vegetative state, the end of the vegetative state. So about the time that about when you get about half the field that has uh, that is tasseled is when you want to start taking it. And that can come in the form of grazing it, letting cows into it to graze it, mass graze it. If you can strip graze it, that's really probably the best way. Just not a lot of people are set up for that. Um, or you can uh, cut it, lay it out. Uh, one thing that it is limited on is you generally would not want to direct chop this um, just because it's going to be so wet at that stage that you wouldn't want to get into that. You can gum it up. Not say it can't be done, but just keep that in mind as you're doing it. But, but yeah, in 60 days, I mean, you can, you can come out with – when you're looking at being able to get – I mean, we've had reports of, of 10 dry matter tons in 60 days. I mean, that's unbelievable. And, and quality, quality fuel. I mean, it's quality product at that. So – where is so you're talking about a a product that creates a big, very digestible, uh, very big mass of forage? Where is this? Where do we see most of this? Where what is it? What is it ad- adaptate? Where what is its what is adaptability? that adaptability? Um, are we talking about geographically? Yeah. So or? where where are you sending this? I mean, I I know personally, I know we send some of this to like Alberta, Canada, uh, places where they just don't have a long growing window, so they're able to make feed in a short time because they just don't have the summer that we do. Um, so, so where, what parts of North America do we see master grays thriving? Everywhere. Um, really it's so the difference is going to be, so it can be used everywhere. It truly can. The difference is when you would use it everywhere. Um, so, you know, it does, it is not, it many times gets compared to sorghum, um, and there are some advantages it has over sorghum. One advantage, one disadvantage over sorghum is sorghum has the ability in extreme heat, extreme drought, uh, to sh- basically shut off and and start again when it, when it cools off or when it gets what it needs. Master Grace isn't going to do that because it's corn plant. Um, its ultimate goal is trying to reproduce seed, and that's not what we want to use it for. Um, and so that's the only disadvantage for it from there. So in those heat, extreme heats, but because it's you can you can have a lot of mess of feed in a, such a quick amount of time, you could plant it in very late in the season. This could be something that you could go in with after a crop's been taken out. And people are like, well, what if I don't get a full sixty days? Okay, well then you got you still got a good amount of feed. You're with taking very it out of vegetative. You're not waiting for exactly. the grain to fill. Maybe you're taking it even a little earlier than what you had thought. You know what? We don't want it to freeze. You don't want it to get in that. But then even if it does, you're still not running into prussic acid issues like you're going to run into um, with with, uh, with sorghum. Make no mistake, from a planting standpoint, from a how you're going to treat it, from the way you're going to fertilize it, it's a corn plant. So you plant it, plant it like corn. You plant it like corn, inch and a half, two inches deep. Um, you can you'll cut back on your nitrogen. Uh, you're only going to use about a unit to unit and a half of nitrogen per growing day, so sixty to seventy five units of in. Uh, you're going to generally need a lot more than that for tr- for traditional corn, but you're not taking it to grain fill, and that's when you use a big old chunk of nitrogen is in that grain fill stage, and so you don't need that. And so you're going to be able to, to limit that and limit your cost on that side of things. Um, <clears throat> this is not uh, GMO, and so it does not... You know, so you're going to have to use some, maybe some, you'll be a little more selective on what spray you're going to use. You're not going to be able to use Roundup and some of your, any of your traditional uh, glyphosate tolerant stuff or glyphosates, but there's still plenty of options. And, and mainly, the, I mean, you can see the way that it bushes up. And if you look at the pictures on Instagram, you'll see this is it canopy so quick that weed control suppression is key early. Yeah. You have to have it because if you don't have it early, you're in trouble because you're going to have weeds out there as tall as the master grays. That's just the reality of it. And that's just one thing we've learned. But once it's controlled early and it's, and it gets up and it tillers and it begins to, to really can't cover like, like we know it's capable of, then you're good to go. Uh, so is this something, I know that like just uh, an issue that is, uh, on farmers minds a lot of the time, but just specifically with the years we've had the last couple of years is if I'm a dairyman and I've got animals to feed, and I get hit with a flood in the spring. Is this something that maybe if I if I miss my typical planting window for planting planting corn silage, is this something that could maybe 
uh, come in and bail me out a little bit. So there's two scenarios when you're going to use this the most, as, as, if you don't have it as part of your regular program anyway, um, is one, that scenario. Uh, you get in too late. You can't put out something traditional, especially in the north. You don't have enough growing days. Uh, very much could use it in that scenario. Another big scenario where we've used it in the past few years is winter kill. So you have a, you know, you have a, a winter where either it didn't get cold enough um, and still stuff started to come up and started to resprout like your alfalfas and things like that and then got killed off um, or, or something along those lines. Or, or there's just a winter, uh, an issue over the winter that it just the, you're, you have a failure from, from your other crops, from your alfalfas or your triticales or something like that, triticale. Um, so is this something that guys have utilized in more of like a double crop kind of system? Yeah, double crop, even triple crop. Um, and what and what what have we seen that works well? Maybe to to com- you know what what kind of a system does this work well with? So one of my favorites to actually use would be to go in um, and, and, and go in after a sorghum field. Uh, take go in, cut your sorghum uh, maybe a little higher than you would usually, not a ton, just a little bit, maybe above a growth node. Um, and, and let that sorghum kind of, or, or I'm sorry, I said that opposite. Cut your master grades right above the growth note and then go with sorghum and intercede that sorghum into into the, the little bit of master You're going to get some regrowth, not a ton, but a little bit. So um, you're saying if you take your master grace field after you've harvested it, harvest it just a little bit tall, yep. go in with sorghum, and then even as you're, as you're establishing that sorghum, you may actually see some regrowth of the master grace. Absolutely. If you cut it tall enough, cut it above the, the lowest growth note. That's interesting. Yep. Um, so, so of all, you know, we've talked about who this, what places that this works geographically, situationally, um, who do you see as the target, uh, customer for master grades? You know, if you're, if someone's listening to this, who speak to somebody, you know, who are the, who is, who is best suited to utilize master grades in their system? Well, first and foremost would be anybody who's needing to lower cost, but, uh, still have a so good everyone. amount of feed. So everyone <laughs> right now, um, Literally, I don't know a single dairy that it won't work on. I guess if you if you don't have the right kind of equipment, it can be challenging for you. Outside of that, and it's still not impossible. You just need to talk to one of the salespeople here and, and, and let them explain how it works. Uh, but ultimately, it'll work on every situation, and it has a fit on every single farm. Uh, the fit might just be different. Like I said, when you plant it, maybe it's a spring plant, maybe it's a a, a fall plant. You know, and get what you can out of it. Um, but just have a plan and execute the plan with it. Do you see dairies uh, using this in conjunction with some of our, our silage hybrids, some of our uh, more traditional products? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the uh, I think the best dairies, the most common dairies that order it every year, it's, it's an absolute part of their cropping plan. Uh, and maybe they even take, um, you know, I can't think of a specific hybrid, but uh, something that maybe they feel like, they lose a little on the fiber side. Um, and so, but they really want the tonnage and they really want the, a lot of grain or whatever. And, the, and then maybe plant some master graze in a paddock and, and get, get, get a little more extra fiber there and mix it in even. Um, you know, you can run into some challenges there with moisture and, and timing and everything. So it's got to take, it takes some planning, but uh, absolutely. Well, very good. Um, it's a different product. It's unique. Uh, clearly looking at these pictures. Um, and if you're, if you're listening on audio, check us out on Instagram. Uh, it doesn't necessarily look like a beauty pageant corn hybrid. The rows don't look like the perfectly shaped rows coming up, but it's uh, it's something that is very beneficial to a lot of people, and it, it it just provides a level of flexibility for somebody to be able to uh, to to change it up and be able to provide for their animals um, in maybe ways that they they wouldn't have otherwise. Yep. Um, you got anything else to add? What, are you, what else you got to say about Master I mean, Grace? What did we miss? I mean, I brought this out to make sure I got right on some of the numbers, but just to give you an idea of what you're going to be looking at, uh, you're going to 10 to 15% average protein. You're looking at NDF 30 as high as 80%, hmm. uh, substantial. Um, you're looking at um, reducing your nitrogen by half to a third, which I said. Um, but if you want to look at comparison numbers, um, Dry matter yields, uh, average corn silage eight, um, master grade six. Like I said, I've seen tens, but I mean, you're talking about an average of six for something in 60 days. Yeah. And that's substantial. Uh, you know, sorghum sedan, three and a half. I mean, so, I mean, that's just a, a comparison. And then, like I said, you're talking about haylage, baleage, uh, grazing, double cropping, whatever it might be. 
um, planting in that 30, 28 to 36 population. Uh, you can do it on um, a 15 inch row or 30 inch row, whatever it may be. The more space you can give it, the more tillers you're going to get. So um, space spacing is definitely key with it. But otherwise, it's corn. So plant it like corn. Use a corn planter. Don't use a drill. Don't use a drill. Yep. Well, I I think it's a good episode, good information. Um, thanks for coming in and talking about some Master Grays. Uh, podcast audience, uh, make sure you join us in two weeks. Uh, our cadence and our schedule on releasing these podcasts is going to be every other week. Um, so so check us back in two weeks. We've got some really exciting guests coming on. Uh, going to get some, some pretty uh, interesting people in the dairy industry that we've got scheduled to come on. So... Uh, so, so check us out uh, as always you can find us on Instagram, Facebook um, you know, YouTube all the fun places that, uh, that we put content out uh, leave us a review and a rating and uh, just thanks so much for, for taking a listen thank you <laughs>